In the world of Super Nintendo, from China, we're having so many different devices, portable devices, hybrid devices. There are so many freaking ways to play nowadays, and AliExpress is providing all kinds of different machines. I've reviewed a lot of them, and in this video, I just want to do an overview of all kinds of different ways we can play in the future. But take consideration, some devices are very difficult to find, or another ones are very expensive to buy. But some of them were pretty good, and another one were pretty damn bad. The Super HD Super Famicom game was one of those weird systems that was quite expensive, looks like a original system, but did came with some very cool extra features built in. in the there were so many let's say cool ways to play but you need to look out for the crappy products because there are enough out there i even checked out some retroid and some let's say more familiar products but i ended up with a piece of crap because it was not working at all or it had a lot of problems with glitches and all kinds of things so in this video let's do a quick overview of a couple of options in the future and what can we actually play So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Pokey Femi DX. So basically, this is a Super NES portable device. It is nothing really new because Hyperkin did release a couple of these devices. And I must say that I really want to review a Hyperkin, but I just figured let's get myself this one from AliExpress, the Pokey family. And overall, like, let's see in the box, we're not going to get a lot of stuff. Not really. Of course, we're going to get some explanation in, I'm guessing not in English. Oh. <coughs> in here are we going to get some extra stuff like we're going to get the option to play with an original controller so this thing is like nintendo switch ish idea so you can use this thing like a portable or you can just use this thing like a freaking game system so that is pretty convenient and very cool then over here we're going to get the av out cable it looks like a very nice high quality cable with gold plated yeah and then we're going to get the power supply hmm i need to get myself and plug because this is not the right connection and then here we're going to get ourselves the pokey family and what i do like about it even because it's in very bulky device because we're going to use big old school cartridges is that it's still very comfortable and the first impression that it is very nice especially when it comes to the button the d-pad feels nice select start here we're going to get the brightness control volume over here on and off input for the power supply here we can put in the adapter that i've shown you before for the controller so if you want to use this thing like a game system and of course the cartridge slot and here we're going to get the l and r and over here we're going to get a headphone out but also can be used for the av out in the inside i'm guessing you will find the battery so let's open it up and just see what we're going to get in the inside oh, okay so we needed a screwdriver to remove it but holy crap this is one gigantic battery and i don't know if you can order this like this so you can see like there is not like your typical batteries that you found this thing has been connected with a connector over there and that's it like this is a special one let's take a close look at the code it like the 18 650 batteries 800 milliamp in total but i don't know if you can order it like so that this thing comes with hmm. but overall it gives you a couple of hours of play time and there's a great way to enjoy yourself some super nintendo so let's close it i already charge it so we can try and see how good the display is because this is going to be an issue most of the time slightly different so you can see like this super mario kart is just freaking annoying so you can see like when it comes to the cartridges you can see that sometimes you're going to get some differences but it's very tight all right so when you're looking at the audio itself like that's it like they are positioned on the on the right position like basically at the front like a lung want to see it with every single handheld but it's not really loud so that is quite disappointing and let's take a close look at the brightness yeah it's off and that's it like even that is not perfect at all so to be honest like the camera picks it up even a little bit better but i am not very let's say pleased when it comes to the quality of the audio it's not loud and the display yeah okay so let's check what kind of character we're going to choose i'm almost choosing biff double f mm, yeah swing your bed baby 
Another thing I'm noticing, like the D-pad itself is very small, it's kind of, kind of clicky, the travel is not very long. So, and overall it's very comfortable. Okay, so let's boot up, and the first game is of course an original PAL game. It seems to be playing the game just fine. What I really love about this Super Nintendo version is that we can basically use the triggers for slapping the stick. Alright, so in the next test I wanted to try out a Super FX game. So see also the special chip cartridges are supported. And the wicket is pressing the wrong button. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Top, let's try the Game Boy cartridge in combination with the adapter. The sound is freaking awful, I can tell you that. Okay, so how about the quality of the TV out? So what I noticed like with the signal out, it did have some issues. So when it comes to the quality itself, it's not bad at all. But when I'm basically like messing around with the cable, you can see that it's super sensitive and that is just an issue. So when it's fit properly, like then it will work fine. But I'm not a big fan of this. The option for an AV out, it's freaking rubbish. Seriously, like the positioning of this EV out function is like freaking awful. And not even forget that when you wiggle around with the cable or look at it, it's going to get into crazy wicked mode. And basically like the signal output is freaking awful. And this is absolutely a beast when it comes to playing. This is maybe also the best like way you can play your original Super NES games on the go. But this thing has even more cool features packed in. On the box, we have two controllers because yep, this thing is a hybrid machine. You can even plug this into your HDMI and play your Super Famicom games also that way like a game system. The device also supports the converter they are selling separately for Famicom games, NES, Mega Drive, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color. And there they are, the converters I recently also picked up with this 7 inch of a beast of a machine. Yeah, there was a little bit of a thing, it's like I couldn't really find every single one of them. So what is all up with this? So what you can do basically is like getting converters. This version is for the Game Boy Classic. Then we're having the one, I think this is the one for the normal NES games. Yep, for the NES games, this thing is absolutely like gigantic. Come with it, like give you a quick look where you can see like this. <laughs> oh man, it's going to be like a clunky situation. And then we're having here the one for the Famicom games. And this is a different story. So basically what you can do, yeah, we don't have the option to plug in controllers like we had with some of the portable devices. We have an adapter, I tested it out and it works like a charm. So that's pretty damn cool. We can even use original controllers. Well, what are we actually going to get in the box? We're going to get ourselves like the toilet paper metal, but not a lot of explanations. Like that's it. Okay, now we're having the micro USB cable for charging. And of course two controllers, because this thing also even came with two wireless controllers. And I can tell you, even like filling through the plastic, I can tell you this is a very nice quality controller. Absolutely, I love it. Like, we do have like the different configuration when it comes to the buttons over here. Than we have seen with the previous model. But nevertheless, I, I must say that's even a good thing. We can even feel that absolutely great. So controllers, absolutely a good go. Okay, then we're having the system itself, and I can tell, oh man, this thing is absolutely beast. It's a gigantic, but let's take a close look at that later. For now, I can tell you this thing has a very nice, comfortable grip. Then we're having the piece of plastic where we can basically dock this thing in, remove this plastic. And then we're having the power supply that we need to charge, just a typical 5 volt charger. Yep, nothing special. And then, of course, we're having a very long HDMI cable. But it's time to take a close look at this great, very nice looking handheld, or in other words, the Super NES Beast, because this thing is huge. Beautiful display, or whenever less like a very nice display. So is it super comfortable? Yeah, that is a little bit debatable, of course. We're having the D-pad. The D-pad does have like a very nice curve to it. It's not a little bit filthy, don't know why, it's a brand new product. Like then we're having two buttons over here, one for the brightness and the reset, and the buttons of the Famicom are like okay. They have more space than normal controller. Just your typical long travel membranes. Select and start over here. At the bottom, we're going to get ourselves even a region switch. This is the connection for the, let's say the external controllers so that you can basically plug in here. Then over here, SPS ratio, an option not every single handheld has. And of course the on off switch over here. 
At that point, we're going to find a micro USB with an LED for indication if it's still charging. Then we have over here the HDMI out, that's a normal HDMI port, and of course the cartridge slot. If you're going to power it on, nothing will happen, or in other words, like there is no games built inside this machine. So you need to implement a game. The first thing I've noticed, like does it even have an indication how far your battery is full? I think it's pretty damn cool. About the batteries, how many batteries do we have? <laughs> we do even have like four freaking batteries. So like they're giving this thing the maximum way to play. And they have like these brandless things going on. In total, we're having like 2000 milliamp for each battery. So we're having like a total of freaking like 8000 milliamp. And we will give you a couple of hours of play time. This is just your typical 800, 650 batteries. So if these things have problems, you can just buy new ones and replace them. I do know like there is like a lot of like fake ones going on. So take consideration if you're going to get one, get a good brand. They will ask a little bit more, but you will have like a way better quality. But nevertheless, let's boot it up and let's play some games. Something I just need to point out that this thing comes with some excellent audio quality. Not like it's superb, but it is good enough. We have like most of the time like one speaker, it sounds like 5 out of 10. This thing sounds great. Also the volume control is here at the shoulder button. So if you want to play and just adjust it very quickly, you can do it fairly easy. Okay, so let's get the screen protector off. And let's play some Star Wing. Okay, so let's play a little bit of a training stage of starring and the thing is like what i've noticing with the audio even the high sounds absolutely amazing so let's get into the trading mode and i will show you that we don't have any problems whatsoever i don't see any weird glitching going on over here let's switch to the wide screen you can just do that in game And how can you make it even more bigger? Yep, with this freaking NES cartridge. Look at this, how long it begets. <laughs> oh boy, this is absolutely really wicked. Okay, so let's see if it's going to be booting up the first time or do I need to clean everything up? Because that is a thing that I don't really like about these cartridges. You have so much and multiple cartridges. Oh crap. All right, so what is interesting, we do have even an option for AV out with this, so that's kind of cool. And then we having, yeah, the problem with the cartridge. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this construction. I noticed the connector is not exactly centered in the middle. So if you're going to put in the cartridge, you need to wiggle around to get it in place. So, now it does the wiggle. Okay, so we're running on turbo mode and that's because I think I'm using the different setting. No. It doesn't matter how I'm going to set it. It's a Paul game, so it needs to be normally slower. Let's turn it off and on again. Whoa. Okay. Let's do it in different aspect ratio. Let's do it, turn it on and off. Oh, there we go. So, it seems to be working just fine. There are even some files on it. This, this game is pretty damn cool. But again, like the volume is quite low compared with the original Super NES games. I think it's very cool. You can even wiggle it around because it's so tight and up in the machine itself, but also in the adapter, you can just play it without any problem. Oh yeah, the sword guy, absolutely my favorite. There we go. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put in a different express ratio. So it doesn't make any weird thing going on. Okay, the Super Game Boy just want to do like a weird thing with a multi-game card. It's to having dual audio is that there is absolutely like a tiny lag between the system itself and not with playing the games, but especially when it comes to the audio. Okay, so let's plug this thing and control the port number one. And let's boot up the game. Let's see if it's going to be recognizing the controller. Ah, there we go. So that part seems to be working just fine. So I think that's one of those very cool features this thing actually has. They can play your games not only on the go, but just also on the screen. But there's another particular thing I also noticed with this device. So this thing, what I understand of, is basically signaling out 720p. But what I do notice besides the HDMI connection is very stable, but it's also very colorful. 
And that is very particularly interesting because I personally never seen it before when it comes to these plug and play devices. I think it's a very cool thing to have in your collection, in my opinion, just if you want to play some Super NES and just want to have like a different way to play. And I mean like when you're looking at an HDMI system, this is a pretty damn cool solution. But let's talk about the Famicom and all the other adapters, because this one does have even the option for an AV out. So I wonder what happens if you're going to plug in the HDMI and also the AV out. We don't have any display going on when it comes to the system itself, but oh yeah, we have like the option to play with two screens at the same time. That is some pretty wicked shizzle going on here. I just wanted to say it's like when you're looking at the AV out signal, it's more especially when you want to play this on CRT of course. The HDMI signal looks so much more sharper than the AV. And also when it comes to express ratio, that option doesn't work when you're using the AV out through the adapter itself. So yeah, absolutely one wicked way to play. Just a quick comparison when it comes to the two signals. It's such a wicked way to play, I can tell you that. This is just actually one of the best like portable Super NES's I've played. Unfortunately, the downside I think is like we don't have like a beautiful IPS display that would make this thing even better than it already is. The only flaw I could find was the yellow line when using HDMI. I couldn't fix it with, an, let's say, with a similar game, not with the settings underneath. It has express ratio, all kinds of cool features that you're missing out with a lot of the other devices. So I have this thing laying around a very long time in my storage compartment and I thought, crap, I don't have any dispute left on AliExpress. I contacted the seller and guess what? He did send me a placement. I must say, I don't know if he's going to do this every single time, but he did. So very big kudos to Retroid, the official store. Very glad that it is because now I can finally make the freaking review or better said like make the final part because the HDMI function needs to be working now or we're going to hope that it's going to be working. Would be kind of like hilarious if it still didn't work. Nevertheless, let's take a close look at this and let's unbox it and let's see how this thing will actually work. And a quick recap for the people who didn't see the main review. <laughs> It's time to wrap, unwrap the bubble wrap with Wicked and just have a lot of fun. So let's do a quick unboxing and let's see what we're going to get inside the package. So this thing comes including everything that we're going to need and that also includes two controllers. But like the bug already said, is that we do have the option to basically use original controllers. The form factor is something different. It's not like a ripoff from the original system that I've seen before. It's a completely different model. I personally really like it, but you've got like this massive power button, reset button, and of course the eject. So the cover itself, I must say that it feels very sturdy, like very nice, like it's a very thick plastic and it does not like the cheap feel that we've seen before. At the back, we're going to get ourselves like the stick of Retroid and some information about it. For example, this model is the C51HD. The original say, region this thing has is NTSC. We're going to play it, so try just to see if we can play some PAL games on it. But I think it will have some limitations. But they, just check it out, we're going to have like the switch over here, the P and N for region. The old school signal out, HDMI with the express ratio where they table before, and here like the input for the DC, that is just a micro USB. So I'm guessing this thing will run on 5 volts. And at the front we're going to get ourselves the two controller ports that we can also use with the rigid controls that I really wanted to try. Alright, so let's see, we do have like all the cables, and meh, surprisingly you're going to give us like nice quality HDMI cable. The controls are completely different, like custom design, so far you can see. An old school cable for the AV out, USB, and we're also going to get a power supply and they sent me the right one for once. No like adapter needed, but let's see, we're just going to get ourselves a USB 5 volt thing. This is a 2000 milliamp, so nothing very fancy. We do also include the Super Retro games. This is a multi-game card that so far I know only works on the system from Retroid or the similar products. Nevertheless, this is a quite interesting one. We're going to take a close look at it because this thing is very awesome. We do have like some 8-bit functionalities for a 60-bit system. And last but not least, I also need to include in this video the toilet paper manual. Yeah, there was nothing much for information here, just basic explanations, but yeah, it's absolutely garbage. It makes no sense. 
Let's talk about the controller, because oh boy, this is quite interesting. So we don't have the traditional Super NES knockoff controller anywhere, no, 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 not at all. Normally we do have like this flat controller like the original one, but we do have like some shape in here. So it's more comfortable to play. The overall quality of the buttons, like Retroid, is more like this premium brand in my opinion. It's a little bit better than all the other cheap ones I've tested out, and it doesn't disappoint with the controller. We have like select start, rub rise button, we do have like the hollow button and the normal button over here. And I must say the touch itself, it feels just great. The D-pad itself feels kind of sturdy, it doesn't have like a very long travel, but doesn't matter, it's not a bad thing. Then we have like the shoulder buttons, also these have a very nice touch. The controller, yeah, the plug itself looks slightly different, plastic. Looks in my opinion a little bit more cheap than the original one, but beside that it also comes with a very long cable, a very thick cable. So in general, first impression is very positive with the controller itself. Okay, so the first problem I noticed is when you're going to put it on the original 16x9 special ratio switch, we're going to have like the weirdest thing. So this is just a Japanese game, boots up without any problem. But you can see there is no image whatsoever. Sometimes it just freezes in a certain image. But the weird thing is like when you're going to boot it up back into the 4x3 special ratio, you can switch it on the back I've, show, I've shown you before. Sometimes it does just give you an image and it works without any hassle or any hassle. It's more like still giving some problems. Let's see if it's going to be booting up now. So we do have like sometimes it like tries to get into different resolution. The other problem, I tried like different cables, different power supplies. You get like it flickers sometimes. Super annoying. All right, so let's see if we can find any difference between the systems. Is there a newer version or an older version? That is something I want to double check. So the left one, don't forget Wicked, is the good one. And the right one is the broken one. But so far, and of course we have like broken the seal over here. And yeah, we can see that it's exactly the same system. So let's plug it in and let's see if this bloody HDMI function finally works. Okay guys, so let's take a close look with my first monitor. It's an LG Full HD, just to see if we're going to get the same weird thing going on. We do have like a Japanese game in here. Let's set this to a different region. So it has been set to an American. There's no Japanese setting over here. 16 by 9, let's boot it up. Let's see if it actually works. They don't have like this weird glitching going on. Okay, we do get a boot up screen. Ah, oh, seriously, again. You can just hear that it is actually doing something. Let's switch to the other resolution. Okay, so I've been messing around with this bloody thing for a very long time now. But the other thing I wanted to do is remove my LG monitor this time. I'm going to get myself a Samsung just for the fun, just so it happens. Because I already like switched with the HDMI, the power supply and everything that came with it. All right, so my old friend is back. Let's turn it back on and let's see what happens now. If we still have the same issues. There's the only thing I didn't like switch out this time. In my previous video I just tried everything. But you can see like it still has the same freaking problems. Let's turn it back into the system. Let's boot it up. Let's see if we can get this bloody thing to work. Because before I was making this video I did test it out. This pissed me off. I really hate this. Really China crap that, that never freaking works. It's so normal. Mamma mia, fuck this shit. All right, so we can see how I still have the same freaking problem. It still like makes that weird like flickering thing. But I wanted to see this multi game card, just see what happens. Okay, but can we switch between mode or? Okay, so the mode Switching does work this time. We did have problems with the previous thing. The previous machine, but... Oh boy. So now I'm putting on the windscreen. It seems to be working just fine. Can I like freaking move or what? Oh, there we go. So, but unfortunate, it's still not perfect. So we've seen like we've switched HDMI cables or I didn't basically did it off camera to make it quickly. But the unfortunate thing is like, there is no freaking way of get this thing work perfectly. Now it's going to start like flickering again. But the weird thing is like, if you're going to unplug it. Oh, jeez. But Super Mario Kart is not working at all. 
the funny thing is like i did play it a little bit for, before making this video but when i started recording it just like did the same shit all over again like this now it seems actually working again so it's like some random thing going on it's a little bit of a bummer so i don't know what you think of this but if you have something like this of a product it's going to be absolutely like garbage like one time it does work and other one it doesn't work at all and it's just stopped freezing I tried multiple games. There we go. It flickers again. All right, let's go. Resolution. And there it freezes again. All right. I'm done with this. I mean, it comes even with a multi-game card and also combined with wireless controllers. And we can use original controllers. So this thing has a lot of features that are quite interesting. But for the people wondering, yep, you can also use the AV out functionality. So if you want to go on an old school retro television, you can do that on a CRT because we still have AV out. So I'm quite curious how the quality will be and also will this thing has actually good gameplay. Because it's not emulation, but does it mimic the original system like back in the days? That is also something I really, I'm curious about. But what are we going to get any inside? First of all, we're going to get the two controllers. And I had not a brain fart because we're actually going to get another controller. We're going to get three of them, one with a wire and two are going to be wireless. And these controllers are looking quite nice. They feel quite comfortable. And I can already say that it doesn't have like the same quality like an original, especially with the shoulder buttons. You can feel and hear this clicky sound. That is not like the original. The D-pad yeah, feels okay. But later on, I will tell you how my experience was. It will work on two AAA batteries. It's going to be part of it. It's going to be old school. You're going to get the super retro game. It's a unique and multi-game card. So far, I know only works on this particular system. It comes with HDMI cables, AV out, even the cable, micro USB cable that you need for freaking powering this thing on. It comes with a pretty damn nice, decent power supply, 5 volt. And then we're going to get the system itself in here. Some great explanations how everything needs to be connected it's like of course the toilet paper metal that i have seen before here on the channel like most of the time we're going to get these weird it is in english so i'm very pleased but we can figure out how this freaking thing works but let's take a close look at the system itself or in other words let's do a quick overview because when you're looking at the system it's not exactly the same quality like the original super famicom it does have some similarities to begin here we're going to get the on off switch the reset button but the reset then we're going to get the first difference it's sounding a little bit cheap then we're going to get ourselves the cover and it seems to be working just fine when the system has been powered on and here you can see like it have all the pins so it needs to have support for all the games then we're going to get the two controller ports at the front and at the back we're going to get some interesting options uh, region switch to going to get av out hdmi out here's the 5 volt dc in and here we're going to find the option for the SPS ratio. So that's a quite interesting option. Sometimes you do find them on Famicons, but not very often, not at all. But when you're going to put them side by side with the original Super Nintendo, yeah, there you're going to see some differences. So on the picture, you don't see anything. It always has a couple of seconds that it needs to boot up. So it's quite interesting. So it seems to be Super Mario Kart, the Japanese version, so we tried on Paul and then Japanese edition. Okay, so let's see if we're going to try out a super famicom game with or impal version with the super chip inside the fx chip i just got the super chip and let's see if this thing is compatible later on we'll do some capturing just to see how it will work out compared with the original one Ooh, that doesn't look very well okay so next up i just wanted to try starming again and i managed to figure out what it was so the switch on the back for the region that gives some issues so for example now everything works fine and that is like the thing that i wanted to figure out like which is what is the problem with this like I'm going to boot it up in the different region called the n sorry ntsc and when you're booting it up you can see it's going to be completely messed up so the region switch seems to be working just fine but that is something you need to take consideration it doesn't do it automatically and you just need to do it yourself see this one ejects very well very nice okay next up let's try the flash card just to see if it boots up it's quite fascinating to see that it takes quite a long time to boot it up and here you can see like it seems to be working just fine so it has an option to basically also play the flashcards 
and then we're going to get of course the final one and the final one is going to be the super game boy just see if it boots up with the super game boy inside because i'm super curious about this and here you can see also this boots up with the super game boy so i find it a really cool piece of technology that even we now in this year that we can get an affordable cheap device that plays every single piece of a game that we can think of i think we basically like try them all the multi-game guard also boots up so when it comes to compatibility it's pretty damn awesome but first let's talk about the super retro game system or cartridge that you can put in the system because that's a quite interesting story so what is this super retro games cartridge it's basically an 8-bit multi-game card containing 580 games yeah it will be like a lot of homebrew and crappy stuff i really see like warzone never heard of it so i'm gonna say that I find it quite interesting to see what they give you with the system. To be honest, I've never seen a Super Nintendo that is backwards compatible with 8-bit games, but okay. It's a really cool extra feature and uh, I think it's pretty cool to see, see that it's actually possible. So uh, I noticed with the Super Nintendo controller, like normally, of course, we only needing two buttons, action buttons with the NES, but that's the only thing I'm also going to get because with my other buttons, nothing is doing anything. Only A and B are configured, so there's no turbo button. And of course the weird Mortal Kombat 4 homebrew game is on here. So let's see if I'm going to get actually the character that I want to play. Because normally I choose the Zub-Zero over there but I'm getting this weird other character. This is such a weird game. We kind of better call it Weird Mortal Kombat 4 or something like that. So I'm getting Kung Lao. I didn't even choose Kung Lao. What the hell is going on? But so far I can see there are no glitches going on, so maybe it's a couple of particular games that will have issues. But okay, so the Super Retro Games. If you want to see more of this card, I can make a separate video about it. Let me know in the comments, but for now I just want to leave it with this. Otherwise this video would be like 50 minutes long. Alright guys, so let's try the AVL function. And I must say that I was really pleased to see this because it works very well. And it's still on a CRT, it looks like really authentic of course. Okay, so let's do a side-by-side -side comparison with the two Super Nintendos. Yep, we're going to use only PAL because this is my PAL system. So I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison and also use an upscaler to get it into HDMI. So I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison when it comes to the quality and the audio performance. But when I take a close look at this HD video converter, we'll use it with my original PAL. It's not the best converter you can get, but I just want to keep it simple and I want to keep it cheap. And just want to do a quick side-by-side -side comparison with the signal output and how will they perform and look side-by-side. -side. All right, guys. So first that we're going to boot up is the original Super Nintendo with Street Racer entered. And what I'm noticing is that there are some slightly differences when it comes to how vibrant the color is and how sharp, but also how is the format. But we're gonna, let's switch to the other version, the HD edition. And you can see like it has some brightness issues. Uh, the image looks slightly darker and the image is not be squeezed anymore. So you can see that there are some differences when it comes to the image. But when we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with many different games, the result is absolutely the same. So it doesn't even matter if you're going to check out a Mario Kart, a Sonic Homebrew game, or let's say a Super Famicom game that has the FX chip inside. No, the result will be the same. The gameplay itself is exactly the same. There is no difference for me anyway, or personally. But especially when you're looking at the colors and how everything looks, there we're going to get the biggest difference. Okay, but we are looking at the Super Nintendo HDMI version. It's still the best one out there. And in the future, I think nothing will be changed when it comes to AliExpress game consoles. You can see that's going to be in hit or miss with some of these devices. I think also the 7H portable device was pretty cool. Let me know in the comments which one do you like. There's something you maybe picked up yourself. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell. And it would be great to see you in the next video for some more retro gaming. Mm.